are live, Madam Chair. Thank you. This is Tuesday, September 15th. This is the Education Committee in the Vermont House of Representatives. And today we are looking at the remaining work uh, before our committee, um, or the remaining work related to education um, that will needs to come to completion by, by now. <laughs> um, I wanted first, I understand that uh, the things that I wanted to talk about today had to do with just an update and where we are with budget and CRF actions happening in the Senate. Uh, wanted to um, get the committee response to the H663 language that I believe the uh, House Human Services is poised to strike from the, the amendment, from the bill. Um, I want to talk about the letter regarding ed financing, and I, and those those are the things possibly after school. Some of those things are being addressed in the Senate right now. So I thought it would be helpful if we saw what they are doing. This work is just the work that the House that the Senate Education Committee has completed. They've sent that document to appropriations. So appropriations will review it. There's no need for us to re respond or react now, but I just think that it would be good for us to be aware of those things that are coming forward. Um, so Jim, if you could go through that uh, recommendation for us, sure. that would be great. Jim, which document do you need at this point, please? Um, it's what I just sent you. Um, okay. Yep, all right. <clears throat> Is that the right one? It's the right one, thank you, Phil. Okay, so uh, good afternoon. Uh, Jim Damer, Les Consul. We are going to walk through the changes proposed by Senate Education to the House as passed version of the budget uh, regarding educational provisions. Um, so first, um, the appropriation, you, you see the changes are in green. So what is underlined in green are um, additions made by um, Senate Education. And what is struck in green are deletions they have made to the House as passed version. <clears throat> so starting with um, uh, uh, the first provision here, you'll see the appropriation has increased um, from 32,400, uh, 32 million, 400,000 to 53 million. That's the first change. And then you'll see later on the reference to D being, being struck out. D was the, the provision we'll come on to that gave a million dollars worth of funding for administration and technical support that has been deleted from this draft. So that million dollars is shifting over into the pre-K through 12 column. Um, we'll come on to that in, in a minute. Then there's some new intent language uh, and reads, um, is the intent of the General Assembly that CARES Act funding appropriate to the agency under this section be used to ensure the safe opening of, and operation of public schools during the COVID-19 state of emergency and that public schools use these funds to the maximum extent permitted by law. And then it goes on to say, um, the change from your language here, if the agency's agency determines that any allocation to a category is likely not to be fully used by December 20, 2020, it shall reallocate that funding to one or more of the other categories it believes has or will have the highest amount of uncovered eligible CARES Act expenses. So we're talking about categories here just to remind the committee that what we're talking about is um, pre-K through 12 general leaf, COVID costs, um, HVAC, um, food, equipment, and um, infant schools. Those are the categories that we're talking about here. Then, uh, and then uh, the next uh, deletion of your language, um, they, your language, if you scroll up for a second, Phil, um, back to the previous page, 
right here. Thank you, Sap here, if you would. Um, they have struck out uh, your language that deals with, um, I can't see here though. Um, you, you know, you're about to priority. So you had, uh, you had language here about uh, the agency could reallocate based upon its view of relative priority. That's been taken out by the by uh, Senate Education. And rather they say uh, the reallocation has to be to other categories that believe we have the highest amount of uncovered um, expenses. Uh, so therefore, conforming change going back down, so if you could to the next page, it's just deleting this reference to um, uh, reprioritization of funding. Um, so that's been taken take take out as well. And then um, C just gives a time frame. So reallocations have to be reported. And now it says within five business days of the reallocation. Uh, then you'll see for efficiency Vermont, the appropriation has gone up um, to 13,500. Um, and then for pre-K through 12, um, it's gone up to $88 million. And then just to show in uh, two, uh, the language um, that you approved in the first quarter budget on independent schools has not changed. So it's still 1.5 million for independent schools. And then if you scroll down to the next page, Phil, you'll see the D I mentioned before is crossed out. <clears throat> That's the million dollars of administration accounting and technical assistance costs that's been put now into the pre-K through 12 bucket. Okay, so uh, next section uh, just uh, deals with a cross-reference. So we just mentioned that this is your Vermont is getting 13.5 million. That's being cross-referenced here. Um, next section is the supplies for equipment for meals. Um, again, cross-reference is being fixed. Uh, the appropriation for pre-K through 12 as just mentioned what is now 88 million. And we scroll down further to green uh, right here. Again, this language about reprioritizing um, is gone because uh, the Senate doesn't give that much discretion to the agency. Um, and again, the report here has to be done within five business days. Then they have taken out the Australian ballot provision. Um, so that's been struck. And keep going. Uh, <clears throat> the um, waiver of online teaching endorsements is the same as yours. The election to unified sc unit school district is the same as yours. So you can scroll, scroll down and fill to the next se section. Um, ADM adjustment they have here. Um, so this is, um, is determining ADM um, at a count not less than the district's uh, 1920 count. Okay. And then they have reimbursement for transportation expenses. So if, um, if expenses in, in supplying food and aid to families during the pandemic is not covered by um, CR funds, then it will be subject to reimbursement by the state. Um, and then going down to pre-K tissue waiver, so this says, says that if a private provider was pre-qualified uh, on or before March 15 of this year um, uh, and loses the services of a qualified teacher, um, it will retain its pre-qualified status for this, this school year, despite the fact of having lost the uh, qualified teacher. And then lastly, it's a task force for after school access the first section here is just the findings, A, B, and C. And the next section below is the creation of the, of the, of the task force. And that's the same language that came over to you from Senate Education, except given the timing, the dates have not changed. If you can scroll down to the bottom, um, Phil, uh, right here, I think. Yeah, right here. Uh, nope, it's a little bit further, I think, sorry. One more. Um, yeah, well, last page here. Um, yeah, so the, the report is now due, um, pause there if you would. The report is now due uh, on or before April 15, 2021. Um, yeah, so there are a couple of date changes there given the timing. And that is it.
Thank you, Jim. I'm sure that there are some questions. And remember, this is just uh, now sitting in Senate Appropriations. Senate Appropriations will take a look at it and we'll see what ends up coming back over here. Just a, a couple of things that, that come out. I think that Senate had updated numbers. So they're working with a different set of numbers than we were working with. Is that correct? Yes. So the number changes are based on, we, we, we had given, a, we have been given an amount. They have been given a different amount based on updated information. Correct. So that, uh, that's I believe Brad James came in and testified about uh, where it's coming in. So that's a projection of what what the need is, I believe. Right. I think we had I think we had half of the the SUs reporting, and I think they had a much larger percentage, if I remember correctly. Um, so that's that. Um, in this section, Peter, did you have a question or comment? Unmute. I just want to, for the record, that's the first time I've ever not unmuted myself. <laughs> it's duly noted. Uh, I think you just cleared up my question. Um, I was noticing that there is a $22 million difference in the request. Um, and just to confirm, that's based on updated numbers um, in terms of what is projected to be needed by the K-12 system. Would that be correct? I believe that's correct. I think the best person to verify that is Brad James or maybe Mark and Chloe. Okay. And, and they, um, they're coming late. And Kate, I'm sorry, did you want to take it section by section? Yeah, I, I think so. I think we can, and I, I want to keep the conversation uh, fairly broad um, simply because it, it, this is not, this has not come to us yet. So let's keep, let's keep the thoughts in a sort of broader sense while we wait to see what Senator, Senator Approach does, and then what House Approach does, and or when it gets there, we'll have an opportunity. So it's got a little ways to go. Um, so then, did, Sarita, did you have a question about this about these sections here? Um, the money number money. No, not about the money. Okay. So um, that's pretty much the first section, correct? The first three sections are the money sections. It's all about the money. Um, hey, um, yeah. Are you going to bring the bill up again? I'm sorry, I did it sure. go away or? Yeah, and it's also on our website. I, I actually usually oh, find yeah. it easier. I didn't look. see it on our website. No, I'm sorry. Phil just got it, so <laughs> it will be. So if we're going to walk. Walk or look through it. Maybe we can yeah. put it up again. Yep. Thanks. <clears throat> and again, we're doing a broad walk, <laughs> not a narrow walk. Um, so I think we can get to um, when uh, I think it's on page two. There's the approved independent schools language that's in green, but that's really unchanged from what we had. Yeah, this has changed from the first quarter budget. Okay, and did we? So I'm just wondering why it was in green. Uh, we add that it was it was um, it was not showing yours because it hadn't changed. Oh, okay. It's useful to include just so people yeah. know what that figure is. Okay. Um. Then we get to the air quality. I'm hoping that we're going to get someone from um, Efficiency Vermont. They just sent a document to us. I haven't read it. I just got it, you know, basically as I was signing on. And it's possible Efficiency Vermont will be able to, to respond to us. They've actually, I think we're giving a report as to how what's happening so far, which will be of interest to us. Um, so this is really more money. More about the money. Um, I think that the one that that, that comes to mind is the uh, re repeal, taking out the Australian ballot language. Is that showing up somewhere else in another bill? I can't recall the rationale for that. Okay. Uh, to web. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I think there is a, I think there is a belief there's gonna be covered elsewhere uh, uh, that government operations, but I'm not sure. Okay. Serena? I just, uh, I also was curious about the rationale to that 
the taking yeah. that language out. Yeah, so that'll be something that will will be of interest to us. Yeah. Um, and I just had one more question about waiving the teaching license. Um, yeah, I thought that's they were getting were to right, That's what we're getting oh, to right sorry. now. Yep. Okay. So. I was just wondering, I thought they were waiving the teaching license for teachers oh, to oh, be able to. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, I was just trying to get the language. That's okay, yeah. Can you scroll, um, advance, it, advance it a bit further. This way? Mm. Yeah, this way, thank you. Uh, stop, stop, oh, stop, 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 sorry. Where is it? B1115. Yeah, down further, sorry. Advance mm. it right here. Right there, right? No. Uh, wait a minute, are you talking about the online? Or are you talking about? Yes. Oh, yeah. That would be B1115. But that's still in there then, right? Yes. Yeah. That's okay. unchanged. I, I was confused with the early childhood and the. Yeah, Go that's ahead. coming. Yeah. The, the anything in black um, is unchanged yeah. from what we did. Yeah, I just didn't see it. Thank you. OK. So then um, we get to, they have put the ADM language into the bill, correct? This is on B1117. So this should be familiar language. You have buy it there. Further, further. The pages aren't numbered, unfortunately. Right, right. Yeah, that green right there that you're coming to, right there. ADM adjustment, there it is. So they ended up using the uh, language. We remember we had three different languages we were looking at. This was the one that came from AOE that just uh, limited them to the, um, the, it was the, the 1920 school year, not less than. Right, okay. Um, Sarita? Yep. I'm just curious about if you aren't counting that ADM. Um, for the children that are law that are not in school due to homeschooling or whatever, how is that revenue made up, or who's responsible for that revenue? Because I would imagine with operating the school, the costs are the same. So, but that lost revenue, how how is that covered? Rita, what's the what loss of revenue? So, if you aren't if you're getting paid the same amount from 2020. Um... No, no, that's not what it says. That's not what it says. This, this just protects those that, this protects the schools that had a precipitous drop um, in enrollment and it's allowing them to, to use last year's enrollment as a number. Um, that they don't, well, Jim, you explain it. I'm sorry, I'm tripping over myself. That it can be not less than, than the, the ADM that they had last year. So it's counting, but go ahead, Jim. I, I'm not doing well explaining this, but. You, you have it perfectly correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically the count when they take it this year, will be no less than the count last year for that district. Because they lost a uh, number of students due to homeschooling or whatever. Um, the count will be no less than they had last year. But the but there'll be less revenue coming in. It's not, it's not a revenue issue; it's a tax issue, because the number of students, um, in part, determines tax rates. So it's per, you know it's it's cost per student. So by by losing students, your tax rate increases. So this avoids the loss of, the loss of students, if you will, and avoids the tax rate increase. That would cost for for one year. Yeah. For one year, right? Yeah. But how is that covered? Who covers that loss of money? It's shared by to... all of the districts. So this is okay. a zero sum game. So it's basically going to just be resetting the ADM across the state. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. And so, Sri, really just to clarify, there's no revenue because the state always funds whatever the voters approve. Right. It's a question of the impact on your tax rate. Right. Yep. Thank you. What, what is interesting about this is that Vermont is not climbed out of its decline in student enrollment that has been happening naturally. So for districts like mine that were 
losing 30 kids anyway, just because graduating a large class, having a much smaller class come in, um, sort of protects against that as well, albeit for one year, then the impact shows up the next time around. Next year. Right. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. This was one of the three things that we looked at. We looked at, at this one, which came from the agency. We looked at uh, uh, protecting them in terms of uh, how um, being able to count students who were counted last year who are now homeschooled, that they could they could continue to count those. And the third one was a hold harmless. So they've selected this one that was the recommendation of the AOE. Um, the transportation expenses is a, a new one for me. Um, can you help us understand that a little bit? Or maybe this is a maybe this is a, a Mark and Chloe question. Sure, sorry, 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 I can't. I'm not sure whether I was distracted by text. Uh, no problem. Let's understand. <laughs> <You're We're sorry. laughs> <laughs> um, looking at the transportation expenses incurred. Um, it's just that I ha hadn't seen this before, so I wonder if you could just help us understand. Yeah, so normally it's a two year lag before uh, transportation expenditures are reimbursed. Um, so this is out in the future a bit, but um, the re reimbursement is based on, on, on transporting students. Uh, oh, right. Cool. Yeah. Um, and of course, with the pandemic, buses were used, trans transportation was used to supply food and aid to the community and students, et cetera. So this just says that if those costs are not reimbursed under other state and federal funds like Sierra funds, if they're not reimbursed there, they will be reimbursed by the state under, under Title 16. Okay. Is the requirement to transport students, is that a state or federal issue? There's no requirement to transport students. It's always voluntary. Yeah. Um, but if supervisors or units choose to transport students, um, then there is some reimbursement available from the state. From the state, from the transportation fund, the general fund? Uh, I think it's, I think, I'm not sure actually. Um, I think it's transportation fund. Oh, there's Mark. Wait, this, this is an education fund cost. Oh, it's an ed funds cost. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, Categorical aid in the education fund. So again, um, if, if if additional money goes out to districts for this purpose, it's paid for through the education fund. So it's basically shared collectively. So so it's off the top, in other words. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, then this next one is another new one: pre-K teacher uh, waivers. That's a new one. This is for a year. Um, then they've taken the task force language and they've updated the dates. This was the bill that came over that we uh, had wanted to take up, but we ran into a, a session shutdown um, and did not take it up. Uh, then there were, you know, we, we were looking at it. Um, so they've moved it to the budget. And they've, it's all the same language, the same purpose. They've just changed the dates. Okay. Thank you. And I think that's it, correct? That is it, yep. Okay. So that will be, we'll be watching that. Um, Sarita? You're muted. I just want to advocate one more time to put a student on that task force, a high school student. That's all. A high school student on the on the uh, the after school task force. Yes, I think there are students on the task force. Can we? Can you scroll down? Uh, fill a little bit further. Uh, stop here. Uh, right there. Uh, or am I wrong? Um, I didn't see one. That is a, okay. Different task force. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to keep looking. So there's not a student on the task no, force, no, is that right? No, sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, 
okay. So Peter Conlon. Um, Kate, maybe you could talk a little bit about sort of process here. I realize, so okay. it's in appropriations in the Senate. Yes. Uh, and assuming they accept their the recommendations of the Senate Ed Committee, um, it then goes into the either conference committee or the various ping ponging back and forth of amendments to the budget. We'll go to the floor, be debated on the floor, come over to the House. Uh, it will go to uh, House Appropriations and then House Appropriations will make a recommendation on what to do. They could just simply uh, concur at which point it's passed. They could concur with further proposal of amendment or they could uh, call for a, a committee of conference. All right, and, and um, your expectation is that they will ask us to weigh in on if these changes make it all the way through to the to when it goes back to the House approach, they'll probably ask for us to weigh in on some of these additions. Yeah. Okay. My, uh, it will my, be moving, let me say, this will be moving very quickly. Right. Um, I, I just like to get some confirmation that the Australian ballot portion is somehow being covered elsewhere. Yeah, that would be great. Jim, can you find that out for us? Sure, yep, yeah, I'll find out. Okay. Um, and at some point, um, Mark, it might be helpful for us to have an understanding of some of the numbers that have changed since we had the bill. We had the bill, uh, we had the bill a, a lot earlier. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I know we know the numbers have changed and I, I don't know if it's easy for you to show us how those numbers have changed now or, or we wanna to try to bring you back in once the bill passes. Well, I, I can sort of describe generally, but the, yeah. the bill hasn't passed yet, so it's pending, but yeah. um, give it since, since the house, um, Past um, the version of this, uh, AOE has been able to identify additional CRF eligible costs out in the district. And there's a range of those costs. The high end of it is about $21 million more than you appropriated. And I think the low end is about 17. The high, Senate Education Committee recommended going with the high end because there are still some districts out there that have not submitted their applications. And uh, I think the intent would be that that additional money would um, be sufficient to fully reimburse districts for all of their CRF eligible costs in both FY20 and FY21. We're now talking a little bit about some additional language that might be useful to reassure the districts that if it becomes necessary to um, uh, prorate their reimbursements because the, the need for those CRF eligible, just because the CRF eligible cost that the districts have identified exceeds the appropriation. Um, some language that describes how that proration would work. I think the districts, the business managers have been very afraid that if they submit both their new costs and their previously budgeted costs, that the proration would disadvantage the districts to the extent they've submitted a request for reimbursements for their previously budgeted, co previously budgeted costs. So, um, it, it probably would be, I can see confused spaces, so it might it might be helpful if uh, I, I, if you're meeting again, if I could come back with you. Yeah. Chloe has a nice sheet that lays out what the cost estimates are, and what I'm describing right now is sort of a work in progress to reassure districts that the way the proration may work will, will work if it has to be imposed would not disadvantage them. Okay. Do you have a sense of the speed at which this is moving? Uh, fast. Fast. <laughs> Today or tomorrow, yeah. So, so today or tomorrow, they're planning on moving it. Um, I, I think I think so. Yeah, I, I haven't. I'm, I'm not. I don't have my finger on the pulse of the appropriation. Okay. Things are running yeah. around and other stuff, but my my sense from talking to people on staff earlier today was that this is moving quickly. Okay, Phil. Um, we, uh, as you know, the the um, house calendar has changed for Friday. Um, okay. To out of respect for Rosh Hashanah, the legislatures never had to worry about. <laughs> holidays in September before, but now we, we do. Um, so I, I don't know um, if we can find a, another time that the committee could meet. Would you like me to look for one? Yeah, that would be great. On any I, particular day? Um, you know, 
I think folks are planning on Friday anyway. I don't know how early folks could come. If they, I, I know there's a before possibility. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I'd say find something. I know there's a possibility that we will meet with human services. I don't know if that's going to happen or not um, related to after school, related to getting an idea from um, uh, the secretaries as to how they, they plan to move forward um, once the CRF fund is gone for the hubs. Um, so there's a conversation about whether we're gonna, gonna bring in that testimony or not. And I'll, I'll know later today, which would be on Thursday when human services meets. But again, that's still uh, in flux. Um, Kathleen. Hey, just to confirm at this point, looking at our agenda, we don't have any additional committee meetings scheduled and we're looking for a time, right? Right, we were, we're, okay. supposed, to, we were supposed to have Friday um, at 1030, but right. um, that but was floor. This floor now. Okay. So yeah, so, so at the moment, keep an eye on the human services. I, I'm just, never, don't worry, I'll let you know. <laughs> just make this easy. I'll let you know if anything's gonna happen with that. But anyway, we can see that um, what one of the things we're gonna talk about today is our letter. Um, so if we could pull that up, I think that's probably the next thing on our agenda. Uh, bearing in mind that ADM has been put into the, it is before Senate uh, appropriations. In the meantime, I do wanna work on that letter. I, I don't know where this is going to end up at this point. Um, I, we had a review the other day and just wanted to make sure that people are comfortable with, with, with this. I sent it to appropriate to uh, Ways and Means. I... This is the draft letter. This is in lieu of um, actually doing something specific about ADM, waiting to see, uh, waiting to see what happens over the next next few months. Most of this will end up being addressed um, later anyway. It was just it was the it was the one of the ways to signal to districts that uh, we hear them and uh, we are asking the uh, agency to be prepared to report back to us. Um, the areas, again, can you just, just do a, the broad, um, Jim would be great, the broad topics that we're asking them to, to review. Sure. So um, first topic is use of federal funds. Um, and there are three areas there. So use of funds received, um, projected unreimbursed costs and any um, and surplus that could reduce the burden of the education fund. Um, second is ADM, so analysis of uh, ADM uh, by district to understand the impact of um, disenrollment due to homeschool or disenrollment generally. Um, the third is special education service plans. So uh, the plans themselves um, and the additional estimated costs of serving IEPs uh, due to remote or hybrid uh, learning models. And lastly, the operational status of school districts. And whatever happens, whether the, whether the language in the um the recommendation of Senate education to appropriations passes or not, this is still information that we're gonna be wanting, regardless of what happens. We wanna know uh, going forward, what are the answers to these questions and giving the agency the heads up to start getting organized to provide this data. Data, Sarita. <laughs> <laughs> the data that we're gonna to need to make big decisions. I love it. So that is that. So if there's anybody that wanted to add anything or subtract anything, now's your time. Seeing nothing, seeing no, no hands. So you're okay with me. This is the information that we'll, we would like to see when we return in January. We did get a nod from Brad that it looked doable. What we were asking for looked doable. Sue Soglowski, um, 
just in terms of that that information does that look like something that that uh, will help in the process for for you as well going forward well as you know we had uh, advocated for the ADM language um, so the letter is um, I, I just heard you say that it that it's would be going uh, whether or not that language um, ends up making it to the end. Um, so I, I do, you know, there is some information that you're asking for here that would be helpful. Okay. Um, yes, Jim. Just heard back, um, you asked about the Assurance DOT provision, you know, evidently uh, Senator White is moving something similar in her bill, which is on Thank the you. Thank you. That's a better place for it anyway. <laughs> um, so the next thing is the H663. Um, do you have that that draft, that, that Senate? Um... Yes, Madam Chair, just a second. Thank you, Phil. <clears throat> uh, Kate, just uh, yes. a quick question back on the letter. Um, yes. Considering that the ADM issue is also potentially being addressed in the budget. But um, potentially. I don't know where that's going. Yeah, it's a, in terms of timing, um, we just want to make sure one isn't duplicating the other. Um, on the other hand, happy to have both in kind of a belt and suspenders fashion. Um, do you see, so that's a good question. I mean, I, I see this as information we're going to need going forward regardless. Yeah, sure. Because there's, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just, I guess, actually, what I really want to say is I hope that if the language does not end up in the budget, uh, for whatever reason, um, that this letter uh, uh, signals what we want it to signal. And right. we sort of want to state it publicly that the idea here is, is we want to know if this truly is a problem so that those of us who might be in a position to help with it in January, we'll get to it expeditiously. Yes, thank you. Um, H663, we heard from, we, we participated in that meeting. The, I, my understanding right now is that the uh, House, House Human Services Committee is poised to strike this amendment and keep the underlying bill. The underlying bill passed the House and we had decided that we would only look at the amendment and not the underlying bill. We never had that bill in our committee. Um, so the, the issue here is, uh, are people comfortable with striking this language? Uh, going forward. It, I'm, I'm not saying that this doesn't look like a good idea. It's just a matter of, um, is this something that's better addressed next year? Um, or is it in the emergency department that's COVID related and budget related that we should address now? And I'm happy if one, one of you, if, if I return as chair and one of you wants to propose um, a bill with this language in it, I, I, I would be very happy to make sure that we take it up. We just didn't have time. And we heard from, we, did, we heard um, a very positive response from um, the Senator who was in both House Senate Education and, um, and uh, Health and Welfare. And we heard um, not, not support for this at this time from the um, associations. So I guess I've kind of put my opinion forward. I usually try not to do that, but I think I think it's fairly clear um, that I would recommend that it be struck. And okay, I just this... need I I, I need um, a straw poll here. This is not a formal formal vote. This is we're now huddling out in the hall about this Senate amendment. So um, let's see. Perhaps could we. Could, could I see by a show of hands uh, if you would like by hand blue hands um, 
if you would like this, if you accept this language being struck. So the question has been sent. Okay, and those who would like to keep the language. Let's oh, clear all your hands. <laughs> clear all the hands. Jay, can you clear your hands? Voting twice is a felony. Thank you. <laughs> Not here, obviously. Um, those who would like to keep this language. All right, I will let the chair know that we're comfortable with this being being um, struck at this time. Good causes like to address it, not while we're bailing out the Titanic here. Kate? Yes. I was having a technical problem and couldn't get my hand up. I'm comfortable letting this lie. <laughs> Sorry okay, about good. that. In case you're wondering what was my problem. <laughs> Why there were 10. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. okay, Screen thanks. problem. It's fine with me if we drop this for now. Okay, thank you.